The remaining Federated fleet of two heavy cruisers, one dead knot, and two scout ships headed into the Klingon Empire, a mere thorn in its side. An enemy force seven times larger was coming to meet them. Spook, asked Quirk, what will the Klingon heart think about our little incursion into their territory? Captain, you are correct in assuming that they will defend their homeland against any other orders, but the Romantans are with them, and being more disciplined, will insist upon carrying out the mission. I believe they're all on their way to attack the Federated. Perhaps they'll stop to play poker with us for a while. You will bluff, Captain? No, I can't risk a bluff now, but I have a few aces up my sleeve. You would cheat, Captain? It's war, Spook. I'm under the directive of General Order 999. All is fair in war, or we die. Ooh, Hira, sighed the Captain. Transmit this message to CHQ. Please send help. Enterprise out. Contact with the enemy in 10 minutes, sir, reported Salute to you calmly. Jim signaled all floors and spoke to them about General Order 999 and its implications. Salute you, call red alert, call battle stations. Scuddy, engines ready? They're running like a charm, Captain. Please don't wear them out. I'll do my best, Scuddy. Sorry to get you into this. Just doing me duty, Captain. Captain, reports salute you. It looks like the enemy is going to bypass our small feet. They're giving us a wide berth. Time for an ace, Captain, reminded Spook. Quirk moved into action. Uhera, send the following message to the Klingon command vessel. Clank, this is James Quirk. Rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. I've come back for you. Excalibur rises once again, piped in Scuddy from the engineering floor. The Klingon Romantan feet slowed up quickly, then began to turn to attack the Federated feet. Quirk could almost sense the rage that had overtaken Commander Clank, for Quirk had always been his nemesis, and Clank had thought him dead when the Excalibur had blown up. Now in his anger, Clank had made a rash move in turning his feet to engage Quirk on such short notice. It was in this moment that Quirk ordered his feet to fire heavily into the enemy. This was the first time in history that a Federated feet had fired the initial shot in a first encounter. It had always been a matter of Federated honor and pride not to fire until fired upon. This was Jim's second ace. Fascinating, Captain, said Spook. Now we are outnumbered by only six to one instead of seven to one. What game do we play next? Now we stand and fight a while and bait the trap, Mr. Spook. Then we play the game of life and the future of the Federated. The feats rocked each other with phaser fire and energy torpedoes. Ships whizzed in and out of weft. Salute Yu had to use every trick that he had learned from playing the 3D hologram video war game simulators. But soon the battle began to take its inevitable toll on Quirk's small feet, and the damage reports came rolling in. Sir, the Incepid reports starboard shells gone, low on energy. The Sexington reports her port shells very weak. The starlight is engaged on three sides and failing fast. Quirk barked out his orders. Incepid Sexington operate in tandem, put your weak sides between you, protect each other. More damage reports came in. Sir, the starlight reports photon torpedo supply exhausted. Enterprise gravity down to point eight. Forward shells gone, phasers weak. Incepid floors three, four, five, and six damaged being sealed off. All systems switching over to reserve power. The Starlight is in trouble, although still attempting to shield us all from attack. She's taking a beating, sir. Quirk took in the action on all of the bridge consoles, somehow seeing everything at once as he had been trained to do as a starboat captain. Yet, what could he do but prolong the inevitable destruction? They're forming a pincer to get between us and separate us, reported Spook. Quirk defeat. Fire all you have left now. Stand by for departure. The Incepid has lost impulsive power, sir. Weft barely functional. The Sexington just lost her forward shells. She's running on auxiliary power. The Starlight has exhausted all weapons. Enterprise phasers now inoperable. Shells fading. Feet, stand by for new orders, said Quirk. Emergency distress signal coming in from the Starlight. Her shells are gone. She's breaking up. Bulkheads closing. She's taking unshielded phaser hits. Cannot maintain. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. Computer, this is Quirk. Tie in to cargo bay transporters. Lock onto all life forms aboard the Starlight and transport them to the Enterprise. A few minutes later, the Starlight blew up. Macboy appeared on the bridge, took one look at the battle consoles, and became concerned. We're going down, aren't we, Jim? Jim ignored the question and looked at Spook. Only one ace left. Spook added up a few numbers. We're only outnumbered four to one now, Jim.
said Macboy. All of our weapons are drained, we can't outrun them. Shell's obliterated, we're done for. Jim, where did you send the Coral Sea? Call her back, we need her. I can't, said Quirk. I sent her to a place where she can't be seen or reached by radio signal or scan. Then let's go there, said Macboy. At your command, Boons, smiled Quirk as he ordered a tactical retreat. Salute you, emergency weft, order the feet to follow us. With that, the Federated feet quickly left the scene of the battle, closely pursued by the Romantin Klingon feet. Clank came on the viewing screen, his anger barely controlled. Quirk, you won't get far, you're a dead man, we'll track you. I'll follow you into hell itself, you know you can't outrun us. Macboy piped up at Clank. At least we wiped out half of your so-called great and wonderful feet. Indeed you did, responded Clank. But now you die for we can exceed your weft speed and you have no weapons left. You won't get far, your power is nearly drained. Write your epitaph, Quirk. Maybe this time you'll stay dead. Uhera, said Quirk. Tell him, I'll see him in hell. And then cut him off the screen. Check off. Take us into the next solar system, inside the orbit of the first planet. Uhera, direct the feet to stay with us in a tight formation. Course set, Captain. But it's rather dangerous to enter a solar system near its sun at high weft speed. Steady as she goes, Chekhov, stay on it. Salute you, status on the enemy feet. They're gaining on us, sir. We will be in their torpedo range in about five minutes. The Sexington and the Insepid are still with us, sir. Good, good, steady as she goes. Sir, interjected Uhera, the Insepid is about to lose one of her weft drives. She won't be able to keep up with us. Spook, enlarge our weft field to cover the Insepid. Done, Captain, but our feet speed is now down to weft 8. Captain. Uhera reports, the Vulcan commander of the Insepid is thanking you for three more minutes of life, and I think he means it. Of course, said Spook, Vulcans always mean what they say. Scuddy, called Quirk, we need more power, our speed is down to weft 8 because we've included the Insepid in our weft field. I need weft 12 now or we're all dead. Captain me poor engines they're already running at the red line. Run them over the red line, Scuddy, that's a direct order. I need two more minutes of Weft 12. We've got to make it into that next solar system. Okay, Captain, she's running over the red line. We're going to ruin her for sure. I might as well give you your last two minutes of life. feats came dangerously close to the first planet as they veered inside its orbit and around the bright sun. The sun's radiation killed all radio signals. Neither Quirk nor Clank could give any more orders to their feats. It was also well known that starboats could survive near the sun for only a short period of time. Chekhov turned to his captain for guidance, trusting him to the end but looking for an answer or for some last-minute direction. Steady as she goes, Chekhov, Take us around behind the sun and out of the solar system. Uhira, jettison the space recorder. Send a mayday signal to Starfleet CHQ. Report our mission has failed. Miss Rin drew to the captain's side and asked, Shall I continue making log entries, sir? Yes, Miss Rin, comforted Jim as he put his arm around her. They approached the sun. It filled the view screen. No one could bear to look at it. Elevation 253, ordered Quirk. Then they rounded the sun. Clank's feet followed as the night follows the day. That sun is our star, Spook. Make a wish on her, implored Jim. Spook looked perplexed. Chekhov looked up and announced, The enemy is only ten light seconds behind us now and closing fast. Their weapons are locking onto us. The dead naught coral sea waited behind the sun. She carefully counted the number of ships whizzing by. As soon as the first apparent enemy ship appeared, the coral sea gave the order to fire and the ship was blown away. Then the next and the next was gone. Ship after enemy ship was obliterated by the dead naught. It was like a turkey shoot. And no enemy ship could take action, for none of them could sense the destruction of the ship ahead of it. 
The obliteration of the enemy feet was nearly complete. Only Commander Clank had the luck to avoid what was happening to his feet, somehow saving himself and his ship to fight another day. The Coral Sea had picked off each ship in the Klingon Romantin feet by firing point-blank into them as they came blind around the sun, their communications disrupted by radiation, their shells tuned to thermal defense, their Klingon war lust distorting their reason as they smelled blood and closed in for the kill. Who here a message to Clank? Welcome to hell, Clank. Quirk out. Clank sped away from the scene at maximum speed. Scuddy's engines finally gave out and clunked to a stop, but of course, the Enterprise continued on slowly, in and of its own inertia. The game was chess, Captain? inquired Spook. A capture on Passant? Sort of, Spook, you're close. Chess gave me the initial framework. Then I thought of the shooting gallery at the carnival back in Idaho. Like the ducks that sat down, said Spook. Like sitting ducks, corrected Jim. Not exactly the way strategy is taught at the academy, said Chekhov. Quirk responded. It was a plan I worked up while deskbound on Star Babe 24. I was saving it for, had I used it for any lesser need, the idea would have gotten out and could have been learned and defended against. Of course, we're still not out of this war, and the enemy certainly won't fall for this kind of trick again. Macboy offered, But you've bought the Federated some more time, Jim. Scuddy appeared up on the bridge. My dear engines are totally gone, melted, but it was worth it, I gotta say, it was worth it. Quirk smiled and asked of Spook, Engine status? Mr. Scutt's engines are inoperable. Spook paused, then caught on to the humor of the situation. Mr. Scutt's engines are a worthless pile of junk, sir. They all laughed together, almost delirious from the strain of battle. Captain, alerted Salute you. We're being pulled back into the sun by its gravity. Emergency impulsive power, commanded Quirk. No good, Captain, said Spook. We're much too close to the sun to overcome it with impulsive power. The sun's tremendous gravity began to draw them in closer and closer. Outer hull temperature reaching 2,000 degrees, reported Spook. Close the bulkheads, Mr. Salute you. Outer hull temperature reaching 3,000 degrees, reported Spook. They soon felt the gentle jolt of the Coral Sea's tractor beam which was to tow them to Star Babe 23. They're towing us like a broken down garbage scow, Mr. Scott, said Spook. Ah, Mr. Spook, said Scuddy. Vara good joke, Spook, Vara good joke.